Hello, everybody. On this edition of The Fine Line Between Stupid and Clever, I'm going to take you on my little adventure I had in building this little parlor guitar. Um, this is a steel body guitar um, that I built as a prototype because I was really enamored with the idea of building a full-bodied steel resonator guitar similar to like a national guitar or like a mule resophonic guitar, which I just think are absolutely gorgeous um, and quite expensive. And it's something that I'd never tried before. And I had looked into some of the uh, technique from watching some videos online where these guys take uh, steel and actually solder them together uh, to make the top and the sides and all that stuff. And I thought, well, gosh, that's something I would love to try to do. And as you'll find out soon enough, I failed miserably. Um, so I don't think that uh, I'm going to be trying to build a real full body guitar, but I have this cute little parlor guitar with a uh, paint lid resonator in it as a memento of my efforts. Um, take a look at the video. I hope you like it. Uh, you might find uh, building something like this is worth a try. Um, I'll give you some details to start with here. You can see the edges are patinaed nicely. I will go over the patina process. There is a um, uh, jack hooked up to this lipstick uh, pickup that has no not, no wiring to it at all. It's just directly wired to the jack just for some amplification. Um, I also have some acid etched logo on the back, which was kind of fun to do too. Um, and if you look closely, the edges are not soldered, but stuck together with JB weld because it's all I could get to work. Anyway, enjoy the video. Stay tuned for more uh, fun experiments with the fine line between stupid and clever. So this project started with a trip to the architectural salvage yard where I found myself a filing cabinet for all of about five bucks. Just in general comparison to the other filing cabinets around, I found the heaviest one I could find to feel like it was the heavier gauge steel. Um, I then took my four inch angle grinder and cut it up as best I can, getting uh, good uh, pieces to work with from the sides and also the bottom of the drawers. Next, there's a little bit of uh, quality time with the orbital sander to get it sanded down to bare metal. From an online blog, I got an idea for this Chef Buddy smokeless indoor stovetop grill to use the grate from it as the uh, grill for the resonator. I sanded it down and left a nice pattern, and I used that grill to scope out the size of the body. This pathetic photograph is the only evidence I have of the hours that I spent trying to figure out how to solder the metal together to make a guitar. I was looking at videos online of mule resophonic guitars and the kind of soldering process that they use. I tried different torches, I tried different forms of solder, I tried things for copper, things for steel, and just with a bunch of scrap metal all I did was make a big mess. So I pretty much got all my parts fabricated, ready to go. And before I put them together, I thought I'd just run down the parts list with you. Um, I did fail miserably in trying to figure out how to solder the body together. So I stopped by Home Depot today and picked up JB Weld, the old fashioned cold uh, weld formula that I think is gonna work pretty well for this. And um, I don't, I'm not convinced whether I'm gonna move ahead and try and build a full sized uh, steel body in the future, but for this guitar, it's gonna be fine. Um, so starting with the parts, first I have my neck. This was a leftover neck from a previous project. It was a butchered um, Squire Stratocaster. The headstock got cut off and also the um, body was abused in multiple ways for nefarious reasons that I'm, I'm not going to go into details. But part of this uh, project was also to try and get rid of some spare parts that I had lying around, sitting around doing nothing. So this is going to be a good thing for it. Uh, second, I went to Home Depot, got some three by one inch oak and made an internal frame for the um, for the body of the guitar that the steel body will go around. So it's got a, a heel block and also kind of a neck piece uh, and a platform to make the neck pocket uh, for the neck. And I've actually already measured out uh, to the holes on the neck, then that's already set up for that. Um, the body itself, I uh, cut a form out of plywood uh, for the body. The initial thought on this was um, because the steel that I harvested from a filing cabinet 
I had uh, limitations on the dimensions of the body, so I decided to make a, just a small body, narrow uh, body, small um, small features, so I could use the drawers that came from the filing cabinet. Also, I realized since I got a small filing cabinet, I was going to be limited in the length of the sides that uh, I could cut out of the harvested material, so I kept it super small. Um, so this is my form. And likewise, with the floor or with, a, with the bottom parts of the uh, drawers from the filing cabinet, I have cut my top and my bottom. Um, they're still painted on the inside. The outside's all sanded clear. I even tried, uh, I left some interesting uh, texture on the back because I tried the grinder to get the sand uh, paint off. Um, and it just worked better to use uh, like 80 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. I cut F holes in the top with um, a combination of drill bits and a Dremel, and it was a little frustrating. I, I could file them down and make them a bit cleaner, but I'm not sure how the guitar is going to turn out just yet, so I could spend a little bit more time cleaning those up. You can see that um, I cut uh, little relief slots around the edge, so um, when I'm putting the guitar together, the release slots, the, the form of the guitar comes right up to those release slots and I will take a hammer and hammer those edges down so it'll create a flange to glue the um, sides together with. So uh, that's the body. For the resonator, um, because I decided to make it a very narrow body just to dis see if I could glue a body together, I went with a cigar box resonator. So this is just a little spun piece of aluminum a uh, six inch uh, spun piece of aluminum that they sell. Someone's put on a lathe and create a little uh, pattern there um, and it fits right in the six inch hole pretty well. So it's actually gonna keep a pretty darn flat profile for the guitar, which will be nice. Um, and since the, these were only about $7.50, um, for I think I got these from CB Guitars, uh, the, the kind of cigar box guitar place. I had free uh, shipping if I got uh, an order over 15 bucks. So I bought two at $7.50 each. So there you go, free shipping. Um, let's see, I have fabricated a trapeze tailpiece. Now I used, uh, um, I actually bought a piece of 16 gauge steel from Home Depot for this because it's a little bit heavier. Uh, and actually there's quite a bit of fabrication going on with that. Um, in the end of the tailpiece, I also am putting in a tail pin jack. So uh, my tail pin jack will fit right into the tail piece like that. Um, now, um, the sides uh, I have that were cut out from the filing cabinet as well, sanded down on both sides, ready to be uh, stuck onto the form. Amazon, you can buy what's called a stovetop grill. This is a stovetop grill. Actually, the interior of it's already been sanded and I cut the hole out of the top, but it comes in two pieces, the grill part and then this flange that goes over your, your uh, flame on your gas grill but uh, if you take this piece off sand it down and cut the hole out you have what actually turns out to be a pretty cool resonator cover and it is actually the exact same dimension as the store-bought cover or var very close to it it's just a little bit smaller by an eighth of an inch or so but uh, for a low-cost alternative to a fancy uh, grill cover for a project you might think about one of these too um, let's see what else did I learn from that that's about it. Oh, uh, for the cigar box kind of resonator, there's another thing called a paint can lid resonator. Now, this is literally a uh, gallon paint can lid that some folks buy in bulk, and then they put on their metal lathe, and they spin it and uh, form a little bridge out of it like that. Um, in comparison to the six-inch spun uh, purpose-built um, resonator, uh, the feedback that I saw on these, the paint can lids are easy, cheap, easy to come by. This is only eight bucks too, but it, uh, leaves a very small ridge. Uh, you gotta be very precise when you cut your hole for the paint can lids. When the flange on the spun aluminum one has a little bit more room to play. So if you have to try to adjust the intonation or move the bridge up and down a little bit, you're going to have a little bit more luck with adjustment with, uh, the, the spun aluminum than the paint can lid, but I just think the ingenuity, that's great. Thought it was cool, bought one anyway. Well, overall the hammering of the back, I think went really well. Um, it's left a very nice, pretty smooth, um, happy edge. I like the profile, it looks really nice. 
I didn't realize why that I didn't cut out the uh, complete neck pocket, so I made uh, pencil marks to finish cutting that up. Another thing to note is like around the edges uh, where the curve was the tightest, some of the um, little flan uh, tabs overlap one another here, and maybe that's part of how it stretched a little bit while I was hammering down, but just the, the mechanics of making that turn. So I'm gonna have to go back and uh, with my Dremel and cut out some of those spots that are overlapped, but that should be easy to do without disrupting the, um, the integrity of the, the top surface, which looks really good. So uh, I hope I have as much luck, luck with the uh, top. We'll start that next. So as I was mocking up the um, guitar a little bit, the original plan was to um, leave the top of the guitar on the form and use this form as a brace to, to um, support the top as the side is bent around and clamped to the form this way, creating this approximation joint that then I would either, that I would solder the joint here to the top with a torch and with solder and with something like that. All that really didn't work out very well. So um, now that I'm thinking about going to the JB weld uh, component, um, instead of uh, uh, gluing the sides just onto the top, then removing the form, then trying to find a way to glue the bottom or put the middle frame of the guitar in and then glue the bottom to the sides, I decided I'm gonna change it up and I'm gonna do it all at the same time. And the way I'm gonna do that is get rid of the form. And I can take my spine that I've already created with neck pocket, put that in the, in the top. Go ahead and the, the original point with the sides as high as it were, the back was actually going to be supported only by the sides. It wasn't actually going to be resting on the spine of the of the um, form of the of the backbone of the guitar. Now, actually, though, if I go ahead and apply the back to that back form, it still makes a nicely sized guitar, kind of like a about the width of a regular uh, solid body guitar, like electric guitar. And then I, I can actually affix the back to the spine, and then at the same time, clamp the sides all the way around and glue the sides on. Um, the sides I'm gonna have to put through my bandsaw to make a little bit thinner than I had originally done, but that should make construction of it pretty solid. Uh, it'll add extra support because it's gonna get better uh, support from the, um, from the spine in the back. So uh, we'll try that and see how that works. Should get things moving right along. Okay, I have recut the relief uh, tabs and rehammered the top and the bottom, and it's time to start putting this thing together. First thing I'm going to do is the wood spine of the guitar. I'm going to glue onto the back. You can see I've put lines in. I've centered it uh, so it's in the right spot. I'm going to use JB uh, epoxy for this part. Once I get the back glued to the spine, then I'm going to glue the top onto the heel block in the next spot here, and then that should give us a nice foundation to glue the sides up with the uh, JB Weld. So here we go. Okay, so I've got the top and the bottom glued with epoxy to the inside uh, stem piece, and so far so good. I went through around and kind of uh, hammered down the tabs a little bit so it's as close to a flat surface as I can, but now the tricky part comes. I've got my sides here, that I'm gonna to try to wrap around the edge. Now, as I approximate the side there, there's definitely gonna be a gap where the rolled over edge of the top um, meets the side. And I'm hoping that the JB Weld epoxy, this is steel reinforced epoxy, um, will have enough of a filler in it and I can, I can fill that seam and that will make a sandable surface that I can sand smooth after it's cured. Um, and so I might actually end up laying down separate beads of JB weld along the seam of this uh, as long as I can get it to hold. And maybe through the weld and the seam plus the tabs, all that will adhere enough to make enough of a solid mass. So um, I think the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, small screws and I'm going to fix the tail piece uh, of the sides uh, at the same spot uh, to start gluing around the sides and bending around with clamps to get it on, so that'll that'll keep it fixed there. Uh, those holes won't be seen because that's where I will be drilling the half inch hole for the um, end pin jack 
uh, anyway. So I figured that was worth giving that a try. So uh, wish me luck. We'll see how it goes. So my time-lapse video cut out as I was running around uh, applying clamps and reapplying and applying again. Uh, and I hope that this is going to work, but I'm not 100% sure because there are some pretty good gaps around the edge like I thought. And I hope that will eventually be filled with um, JB Weld on a second round. Uh, hopefully this round will cure well enough to hold the whole thing together and make it sturdy. And then it's going to take a lot of sanding and a lot of cleaning. Um, but I think that I'm there. Uh, and it did take pretty much every clamp I own to try and get the sides to fit the fit the mold. But uh, so far, um, I'm happy as long as the JB Weld uh, does what it says it does. We'll see. So after about, uh, I guess, 20 hours um, in the clamps, took it out, it's uh, pretty cured. And I think it's holding together quite nicely. The clamps, you will see that I've got some major gaps going along the sides here that I'm hoping that I can uh, create a, a feathered edge and actually the top bow here actually sunk into the side a little bit. Did that on both sides. I think that was just with the pressure of the clamping. Um, first thing I recognize is that this thing is heavy. Um, you'd be really surprised at how heavy it feels. Um, my hat's really off to the artisans and the experts that can do this kind of thing and make it look good. But uh, without the proper tools to precision cut steel and get everything done, probably maybe uh, the right jigs and molds and things, um, this is going to be kind of hard. So after running the angle grinder around the edges and cleaning up a little bit, I decided to try and clean up even the little gaps left with a little bit more JB weld. So I reapplied it. But I thought a nifty way to do that might be to make kind of like a JB Weld caulk gun. So I got a 20cc syringe here, uh, squeezed uh, equal parts of epoxy and hardener into this, mixed it up with a stick, and then it actually worked pretty well. As you can see, like, if I squeeze it a little bit, maybe it's hardened up. You could actually use it like a caulk gun and go around the bead. So I, I laid down a bead around the sides to clean it up, and I think that'll be easy to hand sand to make it look nicely. Now, the other thing I thought about doing was etching my Yin Yang logo on the back of the uh, steel with acid. Um, I've got these old logos printed on vinyl. Uh, I got a stack of these from a while ago. I thought it'd be fun to cut out the vinyl uh, with a knife to make it like a stencil and then put some muriatic acid on there to, to etch it into the um, back of the guitar to see if it works. I figured this is a, a fun experimental project anyway. Might as well try my hand at something different and uh, we'll see what acid etching can do. See how that works. Found a, I have a vinyl uh, decal sticker that I cut out the negative of this old Yin Yang logo. And um, I've got uh, the rest of the masked off. Um, I've also got a respirator um, and some muriatic acid. So I'm just gonna use that cotton swab and dab it on there. And I've uh, seen a few videos and it seems like it only takes about 15 minutes for that to uh, etch an image in there. Um, what could go wrong? So here I've got the uh, new decal covering up the etching and I've got the um, body in a plastic tub with the um, sitting on a couple of plastic cups. Um, one cup is sitting up in the, uh, in the sound hole where the resonator goes. Um, and I'm going to pour some muriatic acid in the base of this and then seal it up with some duct tape and we'll let the fumes do its work. Uh, probably, I don't know how long I'm going to let it sit in the fumes. might be a day, might be a couple of days. Um, I'm looking for kind of a dull finish um, that then I can uh, buff out with uh, maybe some car polish or something. So I, I want kind of a dull underlying finish, but with a little bit of a semi-gloss uh, finish. Well, I don't know how it's going to work. I'm making this up, like I said. Uh, so we'll see how it works. So here it is after spending all night in the uh, muriatic acid bath. And it definitely gave me the dull look that I was looking at, but I didn't expect all this yellow color around where the JB weld was. So I'm curious how that's going to clean up. But overall, for the look, uh, I, and I haven't even rinsed it with water or anything yet. This just directly came out of the bath. We're going to clean it up and see how much of that uh, changes. But I think this might be pretty cool. It is what it is. So just FYI, as I 
uh, took this thing out of the uh, muriatic acid bath. It has continued to patina just in contact with the air here. And I realized that there was still quite a bit of acid on the metal. And I had read and seen in a video that you can uh, neutralize the acid with Windex. So I got a bottle of Windex and started pouring it on and it's literally smoking from the application of the Windex. I mean, watch this. It's pretty uh, freaky. So I think it's still doing quite a bit of reacting. But this should get it to calm down. <laughs> and then we'll seal it up. But the, still, the patina is looking even more and more cool all the time. But I'm glad I'm wearing gloves. So as you can see in the final construction, the resonator cover got modified quite a bit in the end. Had larger um, holes cut into it to make better sound. And also, it was made a little bit smaller to uh, just fit over the 6-inch resonator to give it a little more proportional look uh, for the size of the guitar. Um, we did add, I did add a um, lipstick pickup right up by the neck, and that's attached directly to the end pin jack that then uh, can get plugged in for just basic amplification. It plays pretty nicely, and it uh, makes enough sound for a... a campfire or just like a, a small setting. Um, it's also small enough to fit in a small suitcase and easy to travel with. That's for basic sound. It actually makes quite a good amount of sound. With a little uh, resonator that's in it. It's good for like a campsite or something like that. Um, running through the my little big stack here. The uh, little neck lipstick pickup. There's plenty of sound. It's a little bit tinny on the tinny side, but what can you expect from a body this size and made out of metal? Tinny, I guess. Um, so that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Um, stay tuned for more videos and catch you next time.